Hello all, welcome to another episode of Age of Mythology Retold Triggers. Today I'm going to be teaching you about moving the camera, having camera cuts, and this will lead into a future video about cinematics. So, the camera view we're all used to, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, we can use control and arrow keys to rotate the camera, but sometimes if you've got a scenario with a lot of cliff or units in very awkward places, it's difficult to get that perfect camera angle on them. So, first thing we need to do is to go to Cinematics Camera Editor and check the free camera button. What this allows us to do is it gives us a few more commands and it stops any limits the editor places on us. So if I go page up now, you'll see I can keep going up really high, much higher than I normally could with that button unchecked. Equally, it's the same for down. We have our existing commands of control and arrows to move around. We also can now use the up and down arrow keys to pan the camera up and down instead, as you're seeing here. These all work together with each other. So what you can do is you can zoom down on a unit and then rotate the camera appropriately until you've actually got the shot that you want. From there, if you wanted to save your camera position, there's a few ways of doing this. You could go to the camera editor, you could have the camera lock on. So that means now I can't move the camera no matter what I do. You could also go to the camera states button add a camera state and update the camera state. Now if I unlock my camera, move away and double click on that camera state, it's going back to what was saved before. You can accomplish the same thing with view. So no matter where I am, if I'm at Cronus' feet, if I view, I go back to where I was before. That can be a useful way of saving camera points if you want to come back to it after you've managed to get the perfect shot. And again, you can have quite a few of these. Uh, you can add, update and name these, just so it's a bit easier for you to find out where you are. You've got to press the update instead of enter when you're up doing that. Right, so now you can see I actually went under the cliff there, but I can still zoom to the cameras as needed. I think I might have overwritten that one by mistake, but it's, it's fine if I update. Yeah, I must have overwritten that one by mistake, so I'll update that now. How can we use these? So we've got a few triggers that we can use, which are called camera cut. What this one will do is it will make the player camera look at the exact cut that you can see there. So I've set it here, so this is what the player will actually see. Uh, we can also decide to make the map visible, which would be quite nice. So if I were to start this with victory conditions disabled, as per my last video, you'll find that instead of being at the default game view, we get a lovely view of Kronos on his hill. As so. so that one didn't go to exactly where it wanted to. That's because even though we unlock the camera view in the editor, that limit unfortunately doesn't always apply in the actual game itself. One of the ways we can do this is by creating a camera track. To do this, we press this button here to open the camera track editor and press insert to put a track in. You'll see it's automatically generated a waypoint there. We can delete waypoints and insert waypoints as before. A camera track is going to take a series of waypoints, two or more, and plant a smooth track between them. So the camera will just move gently between them and there's a few other things that you can specify on here. So, important thing to check is the auto update times. Let's put a five seconds in here. So we update our track to five seconds. So that means it just takes five seconds for it to run. Let's have a look at our cameras. So let's go from Crony at point zero. We highlight point zero and press update to Kronos at point one. Press point one and update. That should now have created our track. If we come away from our 
track with the preview button ticked, this will actually be our camera track. So we've got our start point, our end point, and all the little points in between. If we now press play, we get to travel the camera track, so it's what the player is actually going to see in the game. If you want a slightly more complicated camera track, you can insert more waypoints, and again you've got to be a bit careful when you do this, so I'm updating that one there. Sometimes these can get inserted in the wrong order, so again, looking at this, we're going from Crony to Kronos and then back a little bit. Our times have been auto-updated, so it's 0 seconds, 2.5 seconds, 5 seconds, and as you click each point, you see the cross turns pink, so we know it's in the right order. If we press play, we then follow that track from Crony to Kronos, and then we jump to point two. I did say it was buggy. It looks like the time wasn't updated on this one to 2.5. There we go. That looks more like it. So you'll see we've got a nice, nice curve in there, and we move quicker, get Kronos, and then we curve round and arrive at our final position. If we wanted to insert this track in the editor, what we would do is we would just insert and go to camera play track and then our track would automatically play. Let's give you an example of that. So camera track will be constantly ignoring any camera limits. As you see here we get the full track. When the track finishes however the camera will just reset. You can have a track between two points that are the same to essentially create a camera cut without game messing about. So if this were outside the limits, I could create a point here and a point here again, set that to 10 seconds, press play, and you'll see until I close the camera track editor, I can't actually move because this is the camera track. If we again zoom out in preview, you might have just managed to see that there. Let's free the camera again and preview. Yeah, it's just a point there. So with our main camera track, we've got the option of, again, linking triggers to come after it, and we've got a blend time with camera. Let's just turn that on to show you what it does. So what that does is we've got our camera track as normal, and then you see it's slowly going back to a normal game point of view. That one looks quite junky because it was the exact same amount of time as the camera track, so what we could do with this one is we could make it three seconds longer than our camera track, so we actually get our end point and then we smoothly transition into a normal frame of view. As you see there, so we zoom out a little bit and then we come to a normal viewpoint for the game. There's some other options with our camera tracks. It's usually a bit more advanced, but I might as well talk about them here in this video, seeing as we've started. So that's time, which we've discovered. Then we can have tension, continuity, and bias. Hopefully these actually now tell you what they do. So if we go to point one here and we put some tension in, it's going to slow down the camera near the waypoint. So if we make that 1.0, you'll see that the curve has disappeared. We've now got a very straight line, so it's going to the curve, and then it's not curving at all, as we do there. So you can actually see these values in action. Continuity, again, these values are usually from minus one to one, or zero to one in this case. We're going to get some rather interesting ways of doing things, as you can see there. Bias makes things a bit curvier, so we actually overshoot the points with a bias of 1. Bias of 10, we get this crazy sinus pattern, so it's sort of the opposite of tension there. So if we pop that all back, that explains what these things do, and again, you can experiment yourself with these values if you've got the preview enabled. We've got the field of view as well, which can be customised to suit what you want to look at. That's a bit better if we look straight on at Kronos before we enter that. So field view. There, it's more of a zoom. 
What we can also do is we have a trigger which is camera follow unit. This will make the camera follow a certain unit. However, it will start as soon as the trigger is fired. So if we do follow unit for our X-Men in this case, just do it very quickly, you'll see our camera is now locked relative to the X-Men. So he's you moving you and you into you he's always into going to be at that point in my screen no matter what I do. You'll notice that didn't follow the immediate camera cut I did. That's because if I turn the follow unit off, our camera cut's going to take some time to happen. So we're going to be right at the corner of the map, and then we're going to have the cut to the X-Men. As you saw there, it did briefly change. So if you want to lock onto a unit, make sure the camera is at the correct relative point to a unit before you do this. It can be a useful effect, can also be quite frustrating if you don't know about what I've just told you there. Same with facing unit and following unit really, so facing Into unit is just face. going to eventually face that unit. Let's do an example here. So again it's just going to pan down Go. until this axeman is at the centre of the screen useful for cinematics and moving on points of interest. I went a bit more advanced than I was planning to there, but that actually does conclude the section of this tutorial playlist, which I would consider basic. Well done if you've managed to stick with things this far. If you've been enjoying some elaboration and things have been starting to make sense, then excellent. But if not, please comment and let me know if you'd like to learn any more things. I'm going to start the intermediate section next video with an advanced look at God Powers. I will see you there. Thank you.